When you think about exploring foreign lands, or even here in the U.S., going by bike might not be your first choice for mode of travel. But don't try telling that to adventure cyclists Willie Weir and Cat Mariner. They've been exploring the world together, on bicycle, since 1996. They've pedaled more than 60,000 miles in dozens of countries. Willie and Cat, join me now. Hi, guys. Hey. Thought we'd hey. take a little ride while we talked. So tell me about adventure cycling in general. Well, adventure cycling really is just cycling. Uh, but what we find is that when you travel by bicycle, it always ends up turning into an adventure. I have to imagine, as bicycling is not my first mode of travel, that you see some things you wouldn't see if you were traveling by car or bus or tour bus. Tell me about the kinds of things you see that people might not experience by another more conventional mode of travel. Well, what's great is that you, you use all of your senses. You know, when you're in a car, uh, you're, you're driving at 55 or 75 miles an hour, you get the windows up. On a bicycle, you get to hear the world, you get to see the world, taste it. You get to experience it with all of its senses. <laughs> and you just recently finished a trip to Southeast Asia for the first time. Can you tell me a little bit about that trip? Oh, sure. It was just incredible experience to get to Myanmar. Um, just as it's opening up to travel and um, before it's just too full of tourists. A really um, great experience to um, eat the people's food and ride their really rough roads and, and um, feel like ambassadors to this country that's opening. We're going to switch gears. No, no pun intended. Oh, you <laughs> meant that pun. <laughs> it's not just foreign countries and exotic locations. You, you finished a trip to Portland not too long ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we actually did a fully loaded, so when I say fully loaded, I mean the bicycles all packed up, all panniers, tent stove, sleeping bag, and we did a week-long trip all within the city limits of Portland. And part of the deal was is that we told ourselves no hotels, and we weren't going to make any contacts ahead of time. And what was incredible, just like we would travel in India, just like we'd travel in any other country, we cycled 250 miles within the city limits. In that week, we spent one night at Sovi Island, and that was about $12 for camping fee. And every other night, we were on somebody's couch or tenting in somebody's backyard or garden, all people yeah. that we met while we're on the road. There's something about a touring bicycle, I call it the last innocent form of transportation. And there's something about a bicycle that just screams, a loaded down bicycle that screams adventure. And people like to vicariously be involved in adventure. I mean, who doesn't when they see somebody ready to go out to do something? You want to hear about it. And that's what happens with a bicycle. It really pushes you to reach beyond the normal and magic happens then. And if you're in contact with people that you already know, then you're also learning about a country through people who kind of see the way things and to see a country through the eyes of a fisherman or a farmer or somebody who does something that mm -hmm. we don't do mm -hmm. is such a great way to get to know a culture. And again, because the bicycles are so approachable, it's amazing how often we've been someplace and had people invite us, uh, we've you know, been invited into huts, homes, and hovels around the globe, and partially because of a bicycle. I don't think that somebody would have, if we were driving around in a, in a, in a car or a bus, they would have waved yeah. us down and invited <laughs> us over for dinner. But yeah. it happens all the time. Will, you've, you've written a book about your, your life on bicycle. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I've written two. Uh, the first one was with Spoke Songs, and that was based on uh, three trips, one in India, one in South Africa, right after Nelson Mandela was elected president, and one in the Balkans, including where we met. And then the other one is Travels with Willie, and it's a compilation of the stuff I've written for Adventure Cycling Association, the nonprofit based here in the United States based on bicycle travel. And it's reflections, but really it's more the why to bicycle travel than the how. It's not what gear to pick and whatever. It's more that you, uh, what you learn as a bicycle traveler on the road. And uh, hopefully inspiring people, because the cool thing is that anybody can do this. You really can. The bicycle's a great equalizer. Um, it allows people who aren't athletic. I mean, I was on the bowling team in high school, okay? I was not an athlete. That is not a letterman jacket <laughs> you wear, by the way. I, I wasn't an athlete. And so, and at that age, to imagine when I was this little dumpy middle school kid that I would end up pedaling around the world, I never would have fathomed it. But the bicycle allowed me to do something that I never thought I could. Um, I didn't have to be taller than anybody or stronger or whatever. J just get on and pedal. Well, I could see how this could be an addictive uh, pastime. So I think you've mm -hmm. done your job, I'm convinced. Well, and you know what's great about it? The best thing, you can eat anything you want <laughs> and not gain weight. <laughs> Automatic calories just burned yeah. off in, in the travel. You can follow Willie and Kat's adventures by going to yellowtentadventures.com.
And if you're interested in planning a bike trip of any kind, there are resources at adventurecycling.org. Willie Weir and Kat Mariner, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks for coming along.